In today's show, the Bitcoin price finally rises above 9,500, breaking out of this channel. We've been stuck ranging sideways for quite some time, and I predicted this right here on the show for the previous past few days that Bitcoin was about to see a major breakout. Well, we finally broke out to the upside as a $2 trillion Fed stimulus is expected. Go figure. In today's show, I'll be breaking this down. Here's a tweet from Gemini Exchange co-founder Tyler Winklevoss, who suggests the Fed continues to set the stage higher for Bitcoin's bull run as central bank printing continues to push the crypto markets higher and higher. Also, in today's episode, this is major breaking news. U.S. banking regulators greenlights crypto custody as federally chartered banks. That's right. The OCC recognizes that as the financial markets become increasingly technological, there will likely be increasing need for banks as well as other service providers to leverage new technology and innovative ways to provide traditional services on behalf of customers. And they also go on to share the national banks may escrow encryption keys used in connection with digital certificates because a key escrow service is a functional equivalent to physical safekeeping. That's right. People can now hold their crypto though, at any major bank, which can be used as a custody service. This is massively bullish for the crypto market. I'm going to be breaking down this full story right here in today's show. Also, in today's episode, Block Roots says that these crypto assets are ready to rally as analyst John Bollinger warns Bitcoin head fake may trap traders. I'll be revealing what these altcoins are right here in today's show. We'll also be taking a look at the overall crypto market. It just feels great to see a sea of green Ethereum pumping like a mofo right now, up 9%, trading at $265. Chainlink is pumping up about 6.5%. Bitcoin is in the green, above 9,500 resistance. But where's the Bitcoin price likely to go from here? Find out all this, plus so much more, in today's show. Here at Crypto News Alerts, I drop a brand new episode every single day, so be sure to smash that subscribe button and turn on all notifications to receive daily premium crypto news alerts. And before we kick off today's show, if interested in tapping into OPM and leveraging other people's money to grow your wealth and crypto portfolio, smash the link below this video in the description and register for this free system entitled OPM Wealth. All right, welcome back to another episode of Crypto News Alerts. I'm your host, JV, and let's kick it off by diving into today's top story of the day. Bitcoin price finally has a breakout above 9,500 as $2 trillion in Fed stimulus is expected. Let's break it down, shall we? Just last night, the Bitcoin price finally broke out of its sideways range to briefly push above the $9,500 level. The move comes after a slight uptick in daily trading volume since Monday, July 20th, and traders will now watch to see if Bitcoin on coin market cap can hold that $9,500 support and pursue a daily higher above $9,775. Perhaps the move is purely technical as the Bitcoin price has been compressing into a tighter range of higher lows and lower highs since early June, or possibly investor sentiment has been buoyed by recent events in the news. Now, I've been predicting this for the past three days here on the show. We knew a breakout was imminent, and it's just great to see a Bitcoin breakout to the upside, we still need to surpass that 9775, practically 9800 resistance, 10,000 resistance, as well as 10,500 before we can continue marching towards last year's high, which was set at about $14,000. Now, other massive news, which I'm going to share with you in great detail here in today's show, is the Office of Comptroller of the Currency, better known as the OCC, has given permission to allow federally chartered U.S. banks to provide provide clients with crypto custody services. This is a positive step forward as it removes some of the rigmarole involved in acquiring and storing crypto, meaning crypto investors will eventually be able to hold their digital assets in the same bank where they keep their checking, savings, and brokerage accounts. And I just want to throw it out there. If you're a crypto purist, then more than likely, you're probably not going to hold your private keys with the bank. It defeats the purpose of decentralization. However, there's many people out there who would probably lose their own private keys and could benefit from a custody service holding their crypto for them. So 
for each their own. I just know me personally, I'm not letting any bank in particular hold my private keys. It just is what it is. Now, the recent announcement from the European Union to kickstart another $857 billion euro round of stimulus and the expectation that the U.S. Fed will follow suit with the $1 to $2 trillion economic stimulus package could also be boosting investor belief that as long as the Fed is printing, equities will rise and Bitcoin will soon make another run at $10,000. Let me know your thoughts. Do you feel the king of all crypto will surpass 10,000 and break five digits once again anytime soon? I feel it's inevitable. The fact we just had a breakout to the upside yesterday is definitely a great indicator. And now we have all this other bullish news, which we're going to dive deeper here in today's show. So in regards to the new rounds of stimulus, Gemini Exchange co-founder and CEO Tyler Winklevoss suggested that the Fed continues to set the stage for Bitcoin's bull run. That's a fact. I mean, they continue to print more and more money, making uh, the market look very strong. But the real question is, are stocks really strong right now? Central banks printing continues to push the markets higher. That's right. In traditional markets, silver started off the week with a strong pump, which completed a nice cup and handle pattern on the daily time frame. And at this time, the asset is up 19.25% for the week. Not too shabby for silver. Now, gold, on the other hand, has also continued its upward trajectory by pushing to a new high at $1,874 today. So silver and gold all-time highs. Go figure. To date, gold has gained 29% since the coronavirus pandemic-driven market correction occurred in mid-March. Yeah, I said it. Plandemic. This is a financial reset. The rich get richer while the poor continue to get poorer. The S&P 500 and Dow also continue to push a bit higher each day. Further proof that investors expect that the Fed and central banks across the world will continue to roll out stimulus. It does definitely seem that way. As mentioned earlier, expansionary monetary policies are clearly boosting investor confidence in the markets, regardless of whatever weakness analysts might spot in the economy. Now, remember, as the old age saying dictates, the stock market is not the economy. I repeat, the stock market is not the economy. Now that Bitcoin price has managed to close the day above 9,500, investors will watch to see if a higher high above 9,775, that's the number to watch out for, can be achieved after which a shot at the 9,900 to 10,000 psychological resistance level comes into play. I can't wait to regain that five digit valuation for Bitcoin myself as altcoins also posted moderate gains as the Bitcoin price pushed higher at the start of the week. Week. And before we break down our breaking massive story of the day, U.S. banking regulator greenlights crypto custody as federally chartered banks. Let's first take a look at the overall crypto market and let's see what these alts are doing. Ethereum up about 9% for the day, now trading at $264. It just feels good to see many altcoins breaking out. Once again, Chainlink up almost 6% for the day, trading at $7.90. It recently reached price discovery mode once it surpassed $5, rising up almost to $9 before reconsolidating to where we're currently at, and it's back on the march. Once again, if you haven't noticed, I'm extremely bullish on Chainlink. I've been talking about Chainlink and Ethereum as being the most undervalued cryptocurrencies in the market, in my humble opinion. That's just my two Satoshis. XRP up 3.5%, trading just above $0.20. Cents. ADA Cardano, which has been surging as of lately as well, up 3% for the day, trading at 12 dollars half cents. We have XLM, Stellar Lumens up 5%, trading at 10 cents. Miss Litecoin up 3.5%, trading just below $45. And taking a look at some of the top exchange volume, we have Binance down 54% for the day with about $2.2 billion in volume. BitMEX up 0.8% with $1.3 billion in volume. OKEX in the forest green up almost 19% with about $1.3 billion in volume. And Hobby Global up almost 30% with just over a billion in volume. All right, now let's break down this bullish crypto story, which has got so many of us very excited right now. Per July 22nd announcement shared with Cointelegraph, the Office of Comptroller of the Currency, the OCC, is granting permission to federally chartered banks to custody cryptocurrency. That's right. The future of banking with crypto is on board. The issue has seen much skepticism given that crypto wallets do not resemble the custody requirements of other sorts of assets. Nonetheless, in its interpretive letter on the subject, the OCC 
OCC wrote, the OCC recognizes that as the financial markets become increasingly technological, aka cryptocurrency, there will likely be increasing needs for banks and other service providers to leverage new technology and innovative ways to provide traditional services on behalf of customers. If they didn't do this, they'd just be losing out. So welcome to the party. Banks, it's about time. In the words of the announcement, the new opinion applies to national banks as well as federal savings associations of all sizes. So this is pretty massive. Acting comptroller of the currency, Brian Brooks, similarly saw the development as part of a modernizing banking in the U.S., saying from safe deposit boxes to virtually vaults, we must ensure banks can meet the financial services and needs of their customers today. A confirmation of Andreas Antronopoulos' famous line of not your keys, not your coins. The OCC specifies the national banks may escrow encryption keys used in connection with digital certificates because a key escrow service is a functional equivalent to a physical safekeeping. Shout out to Andreas Antonopoulos. So the OCC's heightened crypto engagement is under Brooks. Coming from Coinbase's legal team, Brian Brooks, tenure as acting comptroller has seen accelerated onboarding of crypto capabilities in the U.S. financial system. That's what makes this also very fascinating as well is the fact that Brian Brooks comes from Coinbase's legal team. So he's very in-depth when it comes to cryptocurrency. Now, speaking with Cointelegraph in early June, Brooks hinted at this interest in expanding the right to custody crypto. This follows an international trend of banks looking to incorporate the crypto asset class. Now, let's not forget that JP Morgan just recently announced their partnership with some crypto custody services. And it's quite interesting knowing that behind the scenes they've been working on this when in the spotlight they've been talking down upon cryptocurrency we've seen jp morgan in particular jamie diamond bashing crypto and probably the biggest bitcoin troll next to peter schiff at the end of the day so before we break down our next story of the day and i share these crypto assets that are ready to rally as analyst john bollinger warns bitcoin head fake may trap traders let's first take a look at the overall crypto market cap sitting at 280 billion with 63 billion in volume in the past 24 hours and the current bitcoin dominance has been on the decline yesterday it was just above 62 percent today 61.5 percent right so taking a look at some of the top gainers within the top 100 we have digibyte go digi up almost 13 percent trading at 2.3 cents i've been extremely bullish on digibyte it has been surging quite well this year horizon up 11 percent trading at nine dollars and six cents reserve rights up 10 percent trading at 1.2 cents maker up 10 percent trading at 534 dollars a bbc coin up almost 10 percent trading at 18.4 cents and ethereum up 8.8% trading at $265. It does feel good seeing Ethereum pump once again. Right below that, we have Flexacoin, Quant, as well as Chainlink, all in the green. And now taking a look at some of the biggest losers within the top 100 in the past day. Ample fourth down 25%, trading at $1.96. Nervous Network down 5%. Trading at 0 0.005, iExec RLC down 5%, trading at a buck 32. The Midas Touch Gold down 4%, trading at 4.2 cents. Velas down 4%, trading at 6.3 cents. And Block Stack down 4%, trading at 17 cents. Below that, we have Digitex Futures, Augur, Swipe, Ave, and the list goes on and on. Now, which altcoins in particular are you most bullish on right now? Drop me a comment right down below and let me know in the comments. Engine coin, I'm bullish on. I'll throw it out there. Chainlink, I'm bullish on. Ethereum, I'm bullish on. VeChain, I'm bullish on. Nexo, I'm bullish on. There's so many great projects out there in the crypto market to be talking about. There's a lot of DeFi projects as well. And uh, it just is what it is. Now, let's take a look at the BitMEX margins. We can see the bulls are obviously back in control, leading with the whopping $116 million in superiority in the last 24 hours, with longs leading 56.2% versus 43.7% shorts. Are you currently bullish or bearish on the king of all crypto? Let me know in the comments below. Now checking out one of my favorite indicators is the Crypto Greed and Fear Index. Finally, thank God we're back in greed. We've been stuck in fear for over a month. And since the pandemic, we've been in extreme fear. We finally got out of extreme fear, back to fear, started to see neutral just here and there. Now, finally, back in greed, rated a 55 for the day. Now, if you're not familiar with the crypto greed and fear index and why this is so significant, extreme fear can be a sign that investors are too worried. That can be a great buying opportunity. And when investors are getting 
too greedy, that means the market is due for a correction. All right, and before I break down this final story of the day, Block Roots says that these crypto assets are ready to rally as analyst John Bollinger warns Bitcoin head fake may trap traders. I first want to remind you to smash the show more button right below this video in the description for a detailed analysis of what's going on in the market. This goes for all 488 videos right here on my channel. Also have some very helpful resources for you to plug into, including the blog to my podcast, which could be found at cryptonewsyes.com. Not only is this updated every single day, it also allows you to download the latest episode of the show in MP3 format so you can listen to it when you're out and about, when you're in the car, or working out, just doing your thing. Also, be sure to subscribe on YouTube by smashing that subscribe button right below this video or visit the direct link, cryptonewsalerts.net. You can also follow us on all the major podcasting platforms, including Apple's iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, and Stitcher Radio. You can also follow us on Twitter to receive daily crypto news alerts. My Twitter handle is Crypto News Yes. And for those of you active on Facebook, as I am, I do have a crypto Facebook group entitled Crypto Alchemy with over 17,000 strong from all over the world. To become a part of it, simply click this link, request to join. I'll be sure to plug you in. And for those of you active on Telegram, as I am, I do have a crypto Telegram chat. To join this, simply click this link. You'll automatically be added. And I'm looking forward to connecting with you personally on the inside. All right, now let's break down our final story of the day. The altcoins Augur known as REP, Noya, and OIA, and FIO Protocol, FIO, have all seen significant recent gains, and their bull runs aren't finished yet at least according to crypto analysis platform Block Roots, Augur, an Ethereum-powered prediction marketplace, has spiked about 24% since Sunday, two days ago, and is currently trading at about $23.45 at this time. Block Roots predicts that REP will soon be worth more than $25 and potentially $30 shortly after that. Overall, Block Roots hopes for 40 to 50% gains in the long run after Augur rolls out its second version, which is set to happen next week. Next, we have the Noya Network, NOIA, a public internet software solution which has skyrocketed in value by more than 65% and is currently trading at about 0 0.076 at this time, which is 7.6 cents. Block Roots says that Noya has lots of NDA partnerships with companies yet to be disclosed. Here's what they went on the record to share. NOIA has been on fire and every dip has been bought as this trend line continues to grind up. Very soon, NOIA will be in price discovery and we feel that NOIA is a long-term hold that we kicked ourselves for selling six months from now. Next, we have FIO Protocol, FIO, a decentralized usability layer for the blockchain ecosystem has only been listed for now two weeks. It's seen 36% gains and is currently trading at about 17 cents. Block Roots thinks it can go 2x. Here's what they're quoted sharing. We are actually mocked for discussing FIO as people were calling it a pump and dump. Well, little did they know that a major investor in FIO is Binance. Did you know that? We plan to hold on to FIO longer as we believe it can 2x with its link with Binance. BitMEX is the only exchange trading it and we feel as that opens the door for Binance, which would certainly get the hype going for this altcoin, but do take profits with limit orders. Books can be thin on this one. Then we have crypto analyst Josh Rager, co-founder at Block Roots. He says bullish altcoin charts that get little engagement on Twitter tend to rally the most. Taking a look at his tweet right here. Once there is attention, these illiquid altcoins then get a surge of buyers, pushing the price up even more. You can see that with many DeFi alts banned, caught on, and people piled in. This week, ALEPH, both solid by the way. Next week will be another, always another trade to be made. And he goes on to share the altcoin chart setups that get the least engagement usually pump the hardest. That's because most people aren't in and the same mass of people won't care unless you're sharing about an asset they're actually in until after the alt pumps. That tends to grab attention. Despite the occasional altcoin surge, like the current decentralized finance DeFi craze, the rest of the crypto industry typically remains at the whim of Bitcoin. Rager says he's excited but cautious about Bitcoin's immediate future, noting that he believes alt season isn't over yet. Taking a look at his tweet regarding this, we have to be cautious until Bitcoin closes above $10,000 in my opinion. So to be excited but cautious. 
Meanwhile, John Bollinger, a technical analyst who invented the Bollinger Band's metric, says Bitcoin's at a critical juncture after its move above 9,400. If Bitcoin can't sustain the momentum, the analyst says a significant correction may be in store. Traders use Bollinger Bands to determine the level of an asset's volatility. The upper and lower bands widen when volatility simmers down, while the bands contract when volatility is about to explode. Taking a look at his tweet, okay, there it is, the first lift in the BB squeeze. Now we need to see follow through or we'll be set up for real trouble, a head fake. Bitcoin USD. So let me know your thoughts surrounding these bullish altcoins. Let's first take a look at Augur here on Coin Market Cap, currently trading at $23, down 4.65% for the day, and the market cap currently sitting at $253 million USD, and this is actually the all-time chart right here, and as we continue scrolling down, it's also going to share with us the all-time high was set at $99.80 back in January 11th of 2018. So so this particular coin was once trading at almost $100, so maybe a good investment at this time, considering if you're bullish on this particular crypto. Next, let's take a look at NOIA. We're going to type it in the search right here, NOIA, and let's take a look here at coin market cap. We're down 11% for the day, trading at seven cents even. We have a market cap of 21 million USD with about 654,000 in volume in the past 24 hours. Wow, take a look at this chart. Interesting, right? It just recently started soaring. Let's continue scrolling down here. The all-time high was about 9.6 cents set on October 3rd of 2019. And taking a look here, we actually just started surging recently, July 8th of 2020, as you can see. And now let's check out the last one right here, which is FIO protocol, better known as FIO. Let's type this into the coin market cap search, FIO. And let's take a quick look, shall we? This is currently down about 1% for the day, trading at about 18 cents. Total supply, 1 billion. And volume in the past 24 hours, 618,000. Market cap is unknown, which is interesting. Taking a look at some of the all-time graphs here, just recently started surging as well. And as we look at the all-time high set back on July 22nd, which was just recently at 19.5 cents. So out of this list of altcoins, which ones in particular are you most bullish on? Drop me a comment right down below. Well, that's going to conclude today's show. As always, I appreciate you tuning in and journeying along with me inside this incredible crypto revolution. If you gain value out of today's show, be sure to smash that subscribe button and turn on all notifications to receive daily premium crypto news alerts. And real quick before I go, if interested in tapping into OPM and leveraging other people's money to grow your wealth and crypto portfolio, be sure to smash that link right below the video in the description and register for this free system entitled OPM Wealth. You'll be glad you did, and I look forward to connecting with you on tomorrow's episode. Peace.